morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sun Talk Show. Today is 2019, December 18th, Wednesday, 1 o'clock p.m. San Francisco time. Good morning, Bart. Good morning, Alan. And、uh, what is today's topic? Today's topic is going to be、uh, random, I guess. I was planning to do JavaScript. And、uh, good morning, Dan. So, what、uh, topic you guys to talk about? Okay, so otherwise, I'm just going to do random, okay? So, today, we gonna, I'm gonna show you some stuff, okay? Math combinatorial problems, domino, polyomino, polycube, polyamond. Those are combinatorial problems. We are talking about combinatorial problems because yesterday we are discussing combinatorial stuff, those trigrams, you see.、Uh, so, but we run out of time, so we might talk about that today. Combinatorial mathematical problems, very easy to understand, but those are unsolved problems. And if you solve them, you're gonna be rich. And、uh, we also have math folding problems, which is another combinatorial problem. Map folding problem. You guys know about map folding problem? Maybe you don't know. If you don't know, let me teach you then. So, math combinatorial problems and DOM. Luan DOM. Okay, the. <laughs> Good morning, the magpie. Magpie. Magpie, where are you from? And Dan Morris, I, I think I asked you this multiple times. Where are you from? Dan Morris, join Discord. Don't you want to wait? You are D4, right? You are in Brazil.、Uh, am I correct? Or I,、uh, anyway, so yeah, let me know if I'm correct. The Magpie, where are you from? And Dan Morris, Brazil, I think. So, map folding problems. And combinatorial problems, polyomino, and、um, then we're gonna show you soft like keys, okay?、Mm, soft like keys, something maybe. Then we're gonna show you、um, soft keyboard, okay? Let, let's begin soft keyboard.、Uh, keyboard we talked about many times.、Uh, there's not much interesting. So I found this women thing. This printer, this printer, you know, it lets you print something instant mini smartphone printer. And this printer, the whole thing's size is about、uh, iPhone. Looks like girls are into that. You know, you go to Amazon, you look at the marketing photo, it's basically girls, girls thing, girl style. Girls, they need the photos. And then you have this, I discovered this. Portable monitor. The Magpie is from Niagara. Ni Nicaragua. Oh, that's interesting. Well, Ni Nicaragua. Where is that? So I discovered this portable、um, uh, display. So let's go to Xali keyboard. And I want to get on interesting stuff. So, what? So, Alan says, look at small Asian women products. <laughs> small Asian women products. <laughs> like, what are those?、Uh, so, we go to. So, I'm very busy walking, but I'll be here as long as I can. Oh, busy walking. Oh my god.、Uh, poor Duro. Poor Duro. Should have portable monitors like i iPad. Looks like they have it here, but big screen though.、Uh, why don't you enjoy tasty pastries in an uptown cafe while you are at it? A pastry, tasty pastries in an uptown cafe. Oh yeah.、Uh, so we have this. Okay, it's women's printer. How do I know? Because I. These are people bought from my website. I don't know who they are. I just got the information. And you look at the. 
you see so you can see from the marketing photos they are for women because you know lipsticks and the stuff so you see you can look at this and you can understand part of marketing you can see that when they have a photo like that they they want to attract women okay and that is how also you know this product is mostly for women women like it women buy buy it and uh, okay so print mod fun mod what is fun mod <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway i don't know i don't know what it is so should have portable computers like ipad well they have you have mini mini portable computers today they are pretty small you know just a bit bigger than i ipad uh so you have this printer i mean this uh this display where apparently you connect to your phone let me show uh, there it is so you connect to your phone like that and you have a giant screen so you can watch movies i guess whatever that is those are so so okay you go there buy it okay so if you like it you go buy it so what um okay so what are we doing i i, I feel like i'm wasting time uh, <laughs> because i'm not i don't have a topic now here yet and hello bot so what what do you say bot so magpie says been watching your content for a while now it's quite interesting fantastic joined your discord server like a week week ago great fantastic so for those of you who haven't yet joined discord okay so so close this so you go to my keyboard blog and you can buy these things keyboard blog and there are quite a quite of other interesting stuff so we kind of talked about them before so not keyboard today and discord here is discord today is uh party thank you alan okay so i need to i need to get on something interesting so you know that is the that's why people come to watch our talk show <laughs> okay let's talk about math then combinatorial things domino okay now you guys know what is a domino right of course you guys know what is a domino but so let's look at the polyomino now polyomino is uh has many combinatorial problems in mathematics this subject matter belongs to discrete mathematics okay and uh, this is also um recreational mathematics recreational ma mathematics is a branch of math where the subject matter are mostly interested by amateurs that's one way to put it in general their problem are very interesting and easy to understand we'll give you i'll give you an example in a minute so the problem is very interesting vis usually visual and very easy to understand but the solution may not be so easy the solution take you know some of them takes mathematicians 100 200 years to find but however it's very attractive uh, anyone can children can understand so let me give you an example that is a polyomino okay so a polyomino is a configuration that is created by a combination of let's say five squares so we are looking at polyominoes now so you have five squares and you can create you know you connect them side by side you have various shapes so so in this case you have five squares let's see one two three four, one two three four five one two three yeah five one two yeah so we uh, how many of them are total one two three four five six seven eight nine nine times two eighteen so given five squares you have 18 possible configurations counting counting the mirror images and rotation you know counting symmetry given five squares you have 18 possible configurations so the question is given n squares how many possible configurations are there so you guys understand what i mean this is a unsolved problem okay guys unsolved 
So you're going to serve it and your name, you, you are going to be a immortal. Your name will be in dictionary and the math in history. So here we are looking at an example of polyomino with one, two, three, four, five, six squares. And we can see there are these many possibilities. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 times 7 is 35. So given 6 squares, you have a total possible of 35 possibilities of configuration. So we have a function. When the input is 5, you have, you have, you have 18. When, so then and when the input is, is 6, you the output is 36. Okay, so let's write it down. Xar start command log mod. Let me show you my Emacs commands on the left window. Okay, and uh, okay, so we have f5 equals to 18 and uh, f 6 equals to 35. Fantastic, you see? Show in browser. You see, f5 is, is third, uh, 18. F, f6 is 35. The que so what is f7? What is f8? Now, that, i that is up to you to find out. But, but, but are you here? Are you, are you like, you know, so here is a problem that will make you famous. So you see, Wikipedia, as it is, very informative. They give you uh, the, the function's values. So you can see fn, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So f, f5 equals to um, 18 here. That is, we, don't, we, we, we count also the mirror images. And uh, we also count configurations where they have holes. So you can see, uh, oh, eight, okay, actually 12. So anyway, so it gives you numbers here. 5 is 12, 6 is 35, 7 is 108. So it says, as of 2004, I want Jensen has enumerated the fixed polyominoes up to n equals to 56. The number of fixed polyominoes with 56 cells is approximately Oh my God, 6.915 times 10 to the 31th power. So that's basically a number with 31 digits, 32 digits. Okay, three polyominoes have been enumerated up to n equals to 28. So anyway, you see they give you some answers here, but this is a um, unsolved problem. My background, my background is that is that I didn't graduate high school, and uh, then I didn't go to high school basically in Taiwan. I have middle school. I failed to graduate. I graduate with a certificate that says Kasali attended this middle school. <laughs> that's that's what I got. Then in high, I didn't go to high school, but I passed GED, which is Americans. General education e examination. If you pass that, that means you have equivalent of a high school degree. Uh, then I went to community college for two years and I didn't get a, any degree. But supposedly that's equivalent to AA degree, associate degree. Okay, so that is that is it of my formal education. And in community colleges, I, I took all the math classes, including calculus one, two, three, four, and differential equations, and uh, and linear algebra, and that's it. No abstract algebra, no no nothing, uh, no complex numbers, and uh, no analysis. So I drop out. That's right. I'm a drop out, just like Steve Jobs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, and I've never took any computer programming classes. Everything I know, I learned on my own. You know, there is a famous um, 
preface of a book. You know, typically when you buy a book, there's a preface, there's a dedication, okay? A dedication or preface or prologue. Uh, anyway, so so they say, you know, thank thanks to my wife, thanks to my co colleagues, you know, X Y Z, and thank you, thank you, and usually then, especially academic books by professors, they have a bunch of thank yous, like uh, tens of names. Thank you. They need to thank you, people. <laughs> but however, there is this guy who wrote S C S H. Now I don't know if you guys know, but let me show you. Okay. Uh, should I show my website or should I just go to general website? Let's not show off. Okay, let's just go to their website, not my website. S C S H. This thing, skim shell. Now, as you know, as I get old and most people are younger, you don't know what it is anymore. You haven't heard of this, but back then, this thing is big. Okay. Shut up, Wikipedia. Never donate to Wikipedia, okay? I, I did a video on that a few days ago. Uh, so, SCSH, that is Skim This Shell. And uh, this shell, you, let's go to their website, okay? They don't even, they have a website still. This, we, this shell is basically dead. It's been dead for 10 plus years. But how, however, back in 1990s, and early 2000s. This is one of the very popular thing because back then Scheme this is considered the most elegant language out there. Scheme, okay, Scheme Lisp, which is a uh, part of Lisp, you know, uh, one of the language in the family of Lisp, Scheme Lisp. So you have SCSH, it's basically a Scheme implementation, uh, but as a shell. So you can, you know, like bash. However, I don't think they have interactive shell. You, you, you know, it's not. Um, anyways, you have skim shell, okay? So skim shell was very popular in the 1990s. It's a thing. It's a thing every uh, hacker types talk about, especially among e Emacs users, you know, so on. But it kind of, you know, nobody mentioned it anymore. It's kind of been dead, which is a, in the general situation of skim lisp and uh, lisps in general. So back then, so you have this scheme lisp. This scheme shell is written by this guy, Olin, Shio, uh, Olin Shivers, which is a computer scientist. Olin Shivers. Okay. And I believe originally he is from MIT. Let's see where he is now. Olin Shivers, room, room 318, College of Computer and Information Sciences, WVH. Uh, okay, oh, Northeastern University. So now he is in Northeastern University, Boston. Uh, so is this current? Let's see, what, what is he teaching now? Uh, please get lost. You know, he, he is a character, you see. <laughs> he, he is a, a page that says, please get lost. Uh, what is this? But anyway. So the reason I'm mentioning him and he's got pictures. Let's see, let's see, let's see his great face. Okay, this <laughs> handsome guy, very handsome. However, this picture must be ten years old. I would say twenty, probably twenty years old. So now he's much older. <laughs> uh, okay, so he's kind of a, uh, you know, a character. Okay. So, and the reason I'm mentioning him because in one of his book, okay, that is the skim shell documentation. So let's go to it. Download resource, resources documentation. Uh, let's see, okay, skim shell manual as hypertext. You know the the skim shell manual as as hypertext. You know that those that's the language back in the days. You call a website hypertext HTML. <laughs> there it is, guys. Read this. Okay, this is the this is the mantra for hackers for for you, uh, nonconformist hackers. Olin Shivers, Brian D, Carstrom, Martin. 
Gus Bickler and Mike Sperger, okay, they wrote the scheme shell, okay, and you have acknowledgments. Let me read it to you. Ac acknowledgments. Why should I thank my so-called colleagues who laugh at me behind my back all the while becoming famous on my work, my worthless graduate students whose computer skills appear to be limited to downloading bitmaps of the net news. My parents, who are still waiting for me to quit fooling around with computers, go to med school and become a radiologist. My department chairman, a manager who gives one new insight into and sympathy for disgruntled postal workers. My God, no one could blame me. No one. If I went off the edge, and just lost it completely one day. I couldn't get through the day as it is without the Prozac and Jack Daniels I keep on my, self, uh, on my shelf behind my top 20 JSYS manuals. Okay. I started getting the shakes real bad around 10 a.m. right before my advisor meeting. At 10, a 10 ounce Jack and Jack Daniels and Zach helps me get through the meeting without one of my students winding up with his severed head in a bowling ball bag. They look at me funny. They think I twitch a lot. I am not twitching. I am controlling my impulse to snack my 9mm sick sour out from my day pack and make a few strong points about the quality of undergraduate education in America. If I thought anyone cared, if I thought anyone would even be reading this, I'd probably make an effort to keep up appearances until the last possible moment. But no one does, and no one will. So, I can pretty much say exactly what I think. Oh yes, the ac acknowledgments. I think not. I did it. I did it all by myself. <laughs> okay, guys. Okay, so this is Olin Shiv Shiv uh, Shivers, Cambridge. Cambridge, that's Massachusetts, right? Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts, as I learned, is this tiny state, very tiny, uh, where Richard Stallman, the cult leader, resides. So he wrote this in September 1994. So this is a famous acknowledgement. I did it all by myself. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so I learned by myself. Oh my God, cloud programmer, internet deep hole of Ernst report. This is like rapper. Okay, so that is that is interesting, and that is about skim shell of so of 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 those of you millennial uh, younglings, those of you millennial younglings, read and learn something. Okay. God, SCSH scheme shell, which is dead, dead, D-E-A-D, -E dead, okay, of you Lisp phonetics, scheme is dead, <laughs> oh, 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 of, of, of those of you who are chanting about Haskell, about Julia, about um, Nim, these type of people, beware, scheme was considered by you guys, hacker type, to be the most elegant language on earth. And uh, for 30 years, 40 years, it's dead. It's, where is it? It's still tail recurs recursing on Mars. There, there we have it, skim shell. Okay, that's skim shell. And close, 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 and skim shell. Okay, so that's, that's that. So what what's the next topic? Uh, so let's talk about a co oh, combinatorial thing. We haven't finished that. So so you guys learned about these combinatorial unsolved math problems, right? Keep that in mind. Okay, remember this because this is this is a unsolved problem, and I hope I articulated the problem well. Now once you understand this, you can try to understand. Polya mounts, which is also unsolved. Uh, I think it's a variation. So this in this thing, 
you arrange triangles and you try to count them. Okay, so and uh, do they have like uh, do they say is it solved or not? So okay, so the number of free poly amounts with holes is given by that. The number of free poly amounts without holes is given by that. The number of fixed poly amounts is given by that. The number of one-sided poly amounts is given by that. Oh, looks like it's all solved. Let's look at them. So apparently for the poly amount, the combinatorial problem of arranging them for the total possible of shapes looks like it's solved problem. Is it solved? Do they have a formula? That is the question. This website is very old. Okay, this website is a website design 1999 by this guy NJA Sloan. And uh, yes, I have contact with him. In fact, on this the online encyclopedia of integer sequences, I have an entry in it. <laughs> So let's see, let's see if I can still find it. Uh, post that OEIS, okay, then let's search for Xali. I have an entry in there. There it is, wait, wait okay, there it is. OEIS A001710. Let's see. So this sequence is uh, this sequence is one 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 three twelve sixty three sixty two thousand five hundred twenty then two zero one six zero and so on and this sequence ah oh god this website is so hard to read and let's just search for my name okay Xadi there it is Xadi why is it not linked. God, they removed the link, so you cannot even click it. So anyway, so let's go to the site Xadi. Combinatorial loop in endpoints. Okay, let's copy that link, paste, paste, and go to. So Xadi info, of course, my website has changed domain in the past 20 years since this site, this website, the online Encyclopedia of Integer Sequences began around uh, 1997 or so, uh, something like that. Okay, so this website is very old. And this guy, NJA Sloan, is a mathematician. Um, and uh, you can see, because this site is web very old, these mathematicians, academics, their website is, uh, the formatting is basically 1999. So, you know, very hard to read and so on. But anyway, this this encyclopedia of integer sequences is uh, is a huge reference. It's basically the reference for mathematicians, for professional mathematicians. You, you, when you want to find a sequence, you can look up, you know, in this encyclopedia to see what what kind of uh, math object or process generate that sequence. So in this particular sequence, I happened to write a page back in 1997 about the possible ways to draw a line and pass through end points. For example, if you have four points, you draw a line, what are the possible configurations? So there's one, there's two, there's three. Okay, uh, do I count um, I guess I don't count rotational symmetry, but anyway, uh, I, well, I guess I do, but I don't know why. Y you know, this is written like 23 years ago. I, I have to read it in detail to know why, why, why I have these two repeated, for example. So anyway, this is about the possible loops with n points. So when n is five, you have one, two, three, four, twelve possibilities. So when when n is six you have all these possibilities. Why am, why am I uh, doing this problem? Because I was studying Pascal's theorem, okay? 
And by the way, this is written in Mathematica 20 years ago. So Mathematica is fantastic, OK? So I was studying Pascal's theory. That's, that's math, OK? That's getting a bit more complicated. I have to spend five minutes to explain this. OK, let me show you, OK? That, so this is conic sections. That's the conic sections, ellipsis, parabola, hyperbola. And you have, and they are formed by shadow of a ball. You can see, you can do this at home. Turn off your lights in midnight and take out a, f a lamp and take out, take out a ball. And you can see these shadows. This is elisp. That one, this one is a uh, 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 this this one is hyperbola. Okay, so you have if the light is over here, the red dot, you got elisp. So if the light is above the ball, you got a elisp. If the light is below the ball, like this blue dot, you got a hyperbola. If the light is on the same plane as the top of the ball, you got a parabola. OK, that's how fascinating are these uh, math things, math curves, ellipse, hyperbola, parabola. So and there are many theorems, OK, I'm not going to go into, I guess, actually, I could go into that would be the topic of the day. Uh, so I had no idea there was encyclopedia of online sequences. Yeah, that website is very big. I mean, well, I can, <laughs> but I can tell you are not in math community. So if you are a mathematician and basically if you are any graduate, you know, or undergraduate student, you study math, you all know this. This is the, basically the reference, okay? There's not even, I mean, this is the reference for, for professional mathematicians even. And for amateur mathematicians like me, <laughs> amateur. <laughs> and uh, okay, so what so uh, what are I, am I talking? So I'm talking about so I'm talking about conic sections, many interesting properties. Then you have then one of the theorem is uh, projective geometry. Okay, this is gonna be fantastic. Actually, if we're gonna start to talk about this, this is gonna be half an hour or one hour. But anyway, there's a th um, uh, so, so social signals math people in group. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> no, well, the, the math professors, the real mathematicians professors, they wouldn't read, they, they wouldn't watch my video, okay? That, that's not the thing. If I talk about, I mean, that's not their thing. I mean, I'm not, what I'm doing is math, math education, okay? Math education to undergraduate students somewhat, okay? But if you talk to mathematician, they, they don't, that's, this is not the type of, not the way they talk. They, you gotta use all these math jargons. You, you, you gotta, okay, so if you are, for example, if you sit in a mathematician's le professor's lecture or, or meetings or conferences, what you hear is space, okay, spaces, uh, space, space set, uh, map, linear map, you know, that's, that's all you hear. You don't hear about this. You, you know, one, one way to easily see the mathematicians, how they talk, how they write online, you go to math overflow. Okay, for you programmers, okay, you, you know, many of you programmers, programmers are generally entirely, totally ignorant of math. Like they, 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 they you know, they think trigonometry and calculus is math. No, those are not math, okay? Those are not math that mathematicians are concerned about. Mathematicians, so anyway, go to stack, stack of, um, uh, math overflow, which is part of stack overflow, okay? So we are here, you look at what they're talking about, that you have no idea, okay? The stupid task of fuck, and the git, you know, graph and your uh, things. Look at their tag, okay? Algebraic geometry, uh, number theory, fundamental functional analysis, combinatorics. Okay, that programmers know combinatorics because that's that's uh, recreational math. Algebraic topology, group theory. Uh, I'm trying to get you guys interested 
in interested in group theory because that's very interesting. You will I actually I did two videos on that. You if you look back my videos, a tutorial on group theory. Very interesting. Differential geometry, representation theory, you know, category theory, <laughs> category theory, <laughs> probability. Anyway, so this website is supposed to be that's uh, professional mathematicians, okay? So, for example, for example, let's look at this one. E equal variant cohomology of diffs S1 divided by S1 and uh, virus sorrow, okay? Like, you don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what they're talking about. Well, I have some idea, okay? But that's that's kind of typical mathematicians uh talk online questions you know and uh, we we do have a professional mathematician um in our group and his name is Sid yesterday he posted a fantastic lunch uh, dinner at I showed yesterday he's in Japan doing research on quantum crypto analysis so Sid, okay, so he, he is a professional mathematician and uh, you know he's got this fantastic sushi dinner going on yesterday. So that that so anyway. So let's go back to conic sections. So conic sections there is a theorem called Pascal's theorem. Uh that means Okay, Pascal's theorem. Should I explain it or not? Um, uh, my math education. Uh, so that's um, the JSA math. Okay, okay, so Pascal's theorem came from 1960s. Okay, 19. I mean, six, 1600, 1640, when he was 16. When this guy Pascal, you know. By the way, you know the programming language Pascal. That's named after him or his dad. I forgot which one. He and his dad are both mathematicians. And Pascal, the Blaise Pascal guy, so he was born in 1623. He is a devout Christian. Okay, devout. Especially remember the time is 1600s. So and he's and and he's a devout God believer and and he. There's quite a lot of laws, interesting laws about, you know, when you talk about math. So when, for example, he, he, um, I think he was it. He proved or something about the existence of God. Something uh, I forgot. I have to look. I haven't been really in the math community for ten plus years. But anyway. So he Pascal's theorem at sixteen he discovered Pascal's theorem. That means let me just read it. Okay, so Pascal's theorem it says the okay let me just read it first. The six vertices of a hexagram lie on a conic if and only if the points of intersection of the three pairs of opposite sides lie on one line. Okay, you. You actually have to spend time to understand that, but let me explain what it is, okay? So if you have a conic section, okay, if you have a ellipse, 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 e uh, ellipse, yeah, if you have a ellipse, or if you have a hyperbola, or if you have a parabola, any of these, okay, and any shape, ellipse can be any, any other shape. So given any any one of these shape a conic section you can put randomly six points on on the curve okay so we have a ellipse here we can pick any random six points one two three four five six for example and in this example we can put any random six points anywhere on a curve okay anywhere even if they are like this you see this hyperbola they shoot to infinity so it could be very far away so you put any six points random points on the curve then then the theorem says the theorem says if you connect um let's see how it goes okay um i have to think about this a little bit how to because
one, two. Okay, so let's see what it says. Okay, so so right, so you put six points on the curve. Let's let's focus on the elise for now, and it, it also works on a circle. So you can do it on a circle as well because circle is also a elise. So you you draw six points on a circle. You number them. The num you have to number them. So one, two, three. Four, five, six. Okay, it can be any order, any order you want, but you do want to number them. So it says, it says if you connect the opposite, the connection of the three pairs of opposite sides lie on the line. So, um, Right, so this is a bit hard to explain because basically what he's saying is that if you connect these points, then these points will form intersections. You see this blue line, these two blue lines forms one intersection, and this, these two green lines forms an uh, intersection, and these three red lines forms one intersection. The theorem says these three intersections lies on a line. Always, always, doesn't matter what, where is your point, if these points are on a conic section. And if they are not on a conic section, this will not work. In other words, if you have a situa situation like this, then you know those six points lies on a conic section. Now, to understand fully, is you, you have to understand how the lines are connected. Basically, basically, you have six numbers, one, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, five, six. You want to connect the opposite, um, the opposite points. I think. Anyway, you read it, you will figure it out. Okay. You you want to connect the the for example number one to number three, number two to number five, something like that. You 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 can figure out if you read it this and think about it carefully. Oh yeah, I have an example here. So, so anyway, so this theorem is called Pascal's theorem, and and it's invented in 1640 by him when he was 16 years old. Oh yeah, so I now I remember there's something interesting. Pascal's wager, in indeed the Mac the magpie knows Pascal's wager. <laughs> That's very interesting. Okay, so Pascal's wager is that is the is is on the question about whether you should believe in God. Now you can go to Wikipedia, and I, I know it's there. I think I've read it ten years ago on Wikipedia. But I learned these things in 1990s before there's Wikipedia. How do you how do you learn back then? Well, you you read books and you talk to other you know you read books, talk on the phone to mathematicians, uh, your friends you know. Anyways, and there's also online forums for math. So Pascal's wager is a wager. It's like gambling about whether you should believe in God. So for those of you you know you don't know whether you should believe in God. Here here is a Pascal's wager that you know he he he's got a theorem. That tells you which it has the better outcome. So here his theorem goes that if God is exists, then of course you better believe him because you know otherwise God is gonna punish you, punish you, you know. So if God exists, you better believe. But however, if God do not exist, you better believe too. It's better to believe for your for your good because because there is the possibility that God believes uh, exists because if God doesn't exist it doesn't matter you know you you believe in God is okay it doesn't affect your daily life so it's like uh, free you know it's like something you get something for free so if it if God doesn't exist yeah you can still believe in God believe in God no problem nothing happens to you but in case he does exist then but if you don't believe God, then you got a problem. You you, you know you gotta be pun you're gonna be punished. So the Pascal's wager says that the you you have a better outcome if you simply believe. Okay. Pascal's wager. 
and C. Pascal's wager, there it is. Now, this is how Pascal looks like. And remember, Pascal is the programming language Pascal is named after. So Pascal's wager is an argument in philosophy presented by the 17th century French philosopher, mathematician and physicist Blaise Pascal. It posits that humans bet with their lives that God either exists or does not. Pascal argues that a rational person should live as though God exists and seek to believe in God. If God does not actually exist, such a person will have only a finite loss, some pleasure, some luxury, okay, whereas he stands to receive infinite gains as represented by eternity in heaven and avoiding avoid infinite losses. So anyway, that's so that there it is. Pascal's wager. Okay, so so let's get back to uh, Pascal's wager. There we have it. Okay, so let's close that, and we talked about uh, conic sections. Okay, and why are we talking about conic sections? Because and Pascal's theorem. Because. So anyway, that is Pascal's theorem. And by the way, there's a duo. There's a duo called uh, Brian Kahn's uh, theorem, because in project in projective geometry, every theorem has a duo. So here is a duo. That means basically means if you draw six points on conic random points and you create a uh, tangent lines on um, passing those points. And uh, then you create lines connecting the intersections, and they will intersect in a point. So this is like the the dual or the opposite of the Pascal's theorem. Basically, it's one same theorem because in projective geometry, every theorem has a dual. So anyway, so that that's about. So this is about Pascal's theorem. Now remember when I try to explain Pascal theorem, I was you know there's a problem about about how do you connect the points like what what's the proper order? That is when so I was studying this in 1997. So that is when I I decided I want to know how many possible ways to you know to to create a loop through n points. So that is why I I wrote this program. So with, so if you have five points, you have uh, twelve possibilities, and if you have six points, you have this many possibilities. And it turns out this sequence, this sequence, we have this sequence. So it, so one point, one possibility. Three points, uh, two points, three possibility. Three points. 12 possibility something like that okay so you got a sequence then you know that is why it showed up on this uh, online encyclopedia of integer sequences so you know he just cites he just cites my my dabbling uh, and I'm happy <laughs> I'm happy you know back then I was going to become a mathematician oh well so anyway that's so and and N J Sloan, he's got stories. Okay, he's got stories. I'm not sure. Any anyway. So. So anyway, maybe that's it for today. Oh, uh, polyominoes. We were talking about polyominoes, and we have not finished that yet. So. Oh yeah. So we were trying to see if the polyomons, if they are solved problem or not. Uh, do they say they, you know this this side is a bit hard to read you have to um, I you know you have to spend time to read them because I cannot, you know, I cannot tell whether it's totally completely solved or not because 
by completely solved, I mean there is a formula for it. Well, typically they have recursive formulas. Okay, that's another interesting uh, math topic. So you can usually you can create a, a sequence by recur recursive formula. For example, the factorial of a number. So if you know what's a sequ what's a number before, you can easily compute the next number. But however, it's very difficult to compute some number f far ahead, like uh, if the input is one thousand. So that's recursive formula. But however, some formula, some some sequences, you can have what's called closed form formula, which lets you compute a input directly without doing recursion. So my 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 question is, I don't know. So you have to read this. So it's it's kind of. Um, so anyway, so the online encyclopedia of integer sequences, they also have an article on Wikipedia. You can read about it. Uh, okay, so close that. Close, 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 close. Polyamonds. Okay, polyamonds. They form a. This these are about combinatorial problem. Again, it's a recreational math problem. Okay, and uh, oh, uh, hello, beautiful people. Good morning. To Prague, Czech, Czech Republic. So and uh, so we have the polyomino, which is also an unsolved problem. So these are combinatorial problems. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I mentioned them. Now the problem is not just enumeration of the possible configurations. That's one of the problem. There are other problems. For example, you, you must have run into this um, puzzle. Okay, let me show you the puzzle. So you go to Xali Math, of course. Xali Math. And then I'm going to read the comments. Okay, so uh, Okay, so let me read the comments. Okay, you go to saw math. So this is my math blog, and you go to great math software. So we have a list of great math software, separated by category. Then you go to puzzles. I used to love these uh, puzzles. You know, all these are basically recreational math. Problems. So in 1990s, I was a big fan of recreational math, recreational mathematics. You know, you study uh, this solution to this. By the way, recreational mathematics, which is which is usually discrete math. Okay. So in all the branches math, you have in general the algebra. Okay, of algebra. Then you have uh, analysis, which is like calculus. Then you have uh, geometry. That's a traditional way to group math branches. These top three categories: algebra, analysis, geometry. That's one of the traditional way. Then you have others. But in, so this is a classic, you know. So so they do not, for example. Uh, the, you know, uh, they do not include. They, you don't see recreational math. There's no ex special branch about recreational ma math. You don't even see combinatorics. You don't see, in general, you don't see graph theory. You don't see you don't see things like you programmers are interested. Okay, <laughs> you know. Let me let me tell you about. Let me give you an example of why. When I say, you know, you guys, you know, a lot of programmers, you know, including Haskell people, you know, they talk about. They idolize math. They say, "Oh, Haskell, the you know, uh, category theory every day, or oh, directed graph, graph theory. That's shit. Okay, it's all shit. Two mathematicians. It's almost like th those are fringe. They don't. They, you know, it's like fringe. They, they don't. They don't study. You know, in general, in general, I'm talking about in general, professional mathematicians. They don't study those kind of things. Those those are kind of like fringe. Okay, toy, toy." Those are toys, okay? It's like how how you programmers regard Visual Basic, okay? You know, when when you are a programmer, you know, a hacker type, you you talk about difficult things, C, C plus plus, Rust, Rust every day, Rust, 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 this and that. 
And when someone says, oh, oh, I, I program in Visual Basic, you kind of want to laugh at them. Okay, in, the, in math, it's a similar situation. The mathematicians are busy about topology, analysis, uh, differential geometry, algebra, K-theory, and so on, and, uh, and geometry, okay? When you mention, oh, combinatorics, oh, graph theory, oh, oh you know, the, especially the, the elementary type, you know, the, in, in, anyway, so, or recreational, recreational math, you know, the math, two mathematicians, professionals, they don't, that's like fringe to them, to some degree, okay, that, I mean, that's how they regard it, but, Anyway, but it doesn't mean, by the way, it doesn't mean these are trivial problems. It's not trivial, okay? You know, many great, many greatest mathematicians spend their life studying these uh, re recreational math things. The reason they are kind of fringe to mathematicians is because, it's kind of because society is how, it's just how things work. Just like, why do programmers, why do you guys sneer at visual, visual um, basic? You know, why do you guys sneer at, you know, uh, visual studio code users? Why do you do that? It's just, it's just kind of, it's kind of the, I would say, a phenomenon of social struggle. Because when you are a professional uh, when you are a professional programmer, you want to, you kind of want to promote things that are difficult. And you want to laugh at, you know, those kind of things that makes, you know, something, something for dummies, you know, learn something for dummies in, 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 in one week, learn something in one week, you, you kind of want to laugh at them. Because as a professional programmer, you want your topic to be grand, you know, that's why. That, that is why you usually laugh at, you know, like, for example, at least 10 years ago, the JavaScript coders, the PHP coders, you know, the Visual Basic coders, you laugh at them, you know, you sneer at them. In the same way, in mathematics, the analysis, differential, you know, the analysis, differential geometry, you know, and geometry and the, the algebra, those, those are hard things. You have to spend years to just start to learn things, as opposed to this recreational math or discrete math kind of things these kind of things are easy you know any child can begin to understand <laughs> okay so these kind of things are easy so these mathematicians they don't you know that's not they, that's not thing they like to promote this is why okay that is my explain, explanation why uh, mathematicians in general the professional ones they don't re, don't you know don't regard this as as, as you know they don't they don't they don't you know it's not it's it's not like they think it's trivial but rather they just they, they don't promote it that's the thing just like the how programmers ignore or you know laugh at uh, easy programming stuff so anyway recreational geometry recreational math so recreational math is part of discrete math okay discrete mathematics and in general, the discrete math is what you programmers are interested in mostly, most of the time. And uh, so one of the recreational math is this thing. This, okay, the pentomin pentominos puzzle. So basically, you are given a bunch of, uh, you know, pentominos, and you want to arrange them so that they feel a square. So that is a problem. And here's a software you can try. Uh, this is written by a friend who I worked a bit with, you know, for, for... So, so this program tries to solve the pentomino problem. So let's see, uh, run. Okay, you can see it runs in real time. It used brute force, I think, a uh, brute force algorithm to try to solve this problem. So, why am I showing this? Because this is one example of combinatorial problem. Okay, so uh, combinatorial problem we talked about, you know, it's not just enumeration, but this is another example. And by the way, when I was in the 1990s, I bought a bunch of these puzzles, like physical puzzles you can um 
let's see if we can find it I bought a bunch of them I bought a lot of them I spent you know few hundred dollars on these uh, toys you can still buy uh, today on Amazon but I'm trying to find it they are like that okay uh, yeah kind of like that but this one they try to make it into animal shape uh, that's not so good okay and here you have a three-dimensional version of a puzzle and here someone trying to solve it or something like that you know things oh, I, I bought this okay things like this you buy this and you try to put them together and this is great for a Christmas gift so you guys buy it on my website okay let's see if we can find it on my website uh, I think that's about it and let me read the comments let's see what else I uh, want to talk about poliomino puzzle okay so they got a bunch uh, by the way this book George Martin who wrote this George Martin I've seen this book uh, okay and this book this book is what poliomino's molding Japanese edition wait I want to I don't want books I want the puzzles anyway you, you uh, yeah here so path words okay so no crosswords are no good I hate crossword cross crosswords is the worst game possible crosswords <laughs> so Alan says topic to what extent can people choose what they believe in uh, can you choose to believe or just live on the assumptions that something is true uh, like what do you mean I guess depends on what what is the thing we're talking about like can I choose to believe can I choose to believe people do not exist well in practice no because otherwise I'll be insane uh, but can I choose to believe that God doesn't exist in practice yes because a lot of people are atheists you just live and die uh, it works fine can I choose to believe you know like what what do you mean exactly what like what kind of things you can choose or not to choose to believe uh, okay so Alan says Alan says there is no need to believe in integers but you can assume integers or reason about them oh well that becomes philosophical philosophical then because what do you mean by believe uh, and see how your model of them maps to reality yeah that yeah I guess yeah your so your question is like uh, philosophy and uh, in fact it's about it's kind of useless philosophy okay <laughs> that, that, that's you are talk, I think th those kind of topic becomes uh, you know m mind and matter problems or the problem of the mind you know that's classical philosophy you can talk you know like the question of free will you know what do you mean by believe like in philosophy they will they actually talk about what does believe means you know they they they, they have a book on that what does believe means you know <laughs> that's usually use that those are the kind of useless philosophy and those are kind of philosophy when people think about philosophy like when people usually will consider philosophy useless and when they think of that because because those kind of things you know that that that's why they think is philosophy but actually philosophy is fundamental what right now every one of you whatever you think doesn't matter you are Asian white people or black people the every thought is influenced by philosophy of your culture you know you know for example in general why do Asian people Japanese for example you guys seen all the Japanese websites right uh, they have different uh, different ethics about sex you know different ethics about you know their anime always girls with panties showing where in America that's like oh, no you cannot do that you know but in Japan it's everywhere everywhere you, you know it's like everywhere you can you can everywhere so and Japan have weird you know 
Japan, they they have different culture, and in U.S. you have your culture. It's quite different, okay? And why? I can tell you why. Philosophy, philosophy shapes your entire culture. The culture, the cultural differences. The major part is philosophy. Because why? Why white people think different than Japanese people? Because white people they grew up in Western philosophy. Greeks, you grew, you know, it's like. It's 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 not something you can actually pinpoint, but that's the thing. So so don't say don't say philosophy is unimportant. Okay, that's idiot. That's idiocy. Paul Graham actually said that. Paul Graham is idiot in that regard. In fact, I have an article. And also, by the way, recently we talked about the guy,、uh, Mark Tarver, who created the Qi language, the Qi Lisp, and the Shen language. Shen Lisp, Mark Tarver, a very weird guy who is a monk, lives in you know in India. Some he is he is a certified monk, like he's a like a certificate. He's actually a monk, you know, of certain Buddhism. I don't know what. So he's very weird. So he created Shen language, and uh, uh, and you guys have read some of his articles, and so he. He also criticized Paul Graham, <laughs> you know this Paul Graham God, you know the the Paul Graham celebrity. Okay, why I attack him? Not attack. Okay, why I criticize? Because why? Why do I call him an idiot? Idiot, because it's not because he's a really idiot, but because once you become a celebrity, he's you know I he's very smart. Okay, intelligent and great work, great programmer. Very smart and also、uh, has has the ability to start a company and very rich as well. So of course he's far better than me in in lots of regards. But however, I call him an idiot because once you become a celebrity, every thought becomes golden, like spread by every idiots, the programmers, okay, <laughs> or or the pro- hacker types, you know. So he proclaims, oh hacker, hacker is like a painter. If you're not a painter, you are not a hacker. Something like that. You know. Anyway, he wrote wrote a book, you know, hackers and painters. And over China, all the Chinese people are like idolize the book, you know, because oh, Paul Graham, the least God wrote it. We we must read it. It's idiocy. And、uh, so he has a lot of essays on his website, you know, Paul Graham. And one of the one of the essay is about, you know, he's claiming philosophy. Or logic is useless. Okay, let's search for Paul Graham. Okay, I have a article on that, and I must mention、uh, Mark Tarver concurs.、Uh, okay, so here's the article: Paul Graham in. Paul Graham's infatuation with the concept of hacker. You know, Paul Graham, this guy, he's got the he's he's a hacker type. Okay, he's got a need to invoke hacker. Everything is about hacker, hacker this, hacker that. Oh, you must have a company that's made of hackers. Otherwise, your company won't succeed. <laughs> that's Paul Graham. You must have a programming language. The best the best programming language is the one that hacker likes. That is from Paul Graham. He he created Arc language, Arc Lisp, which is dead. And by the way, if, if,、uh, three months ago he created another article about a new Lisp, <laughs> which which I see zero value at all. So anyway, Paul Graham, because he's why well because he's famous like Kim Kardashian, Kim K- Kardashian among the girls. Everything every day the Kim Kardashian, you know, they wear some bikini, then all the girls went crazy. Same thing with Paul Graham. He just fought anything. Then all the idiot followers, millions, literally, you will go. Oh, Paul Graham said this, that, that. Okay. Anyway, wait. By, by the way, I and I, I know you mentioned、uh, Alan. You mentioned uh, Paul Graham's、uh, recent article about geniuses. You know, like what makes up a genius. I haven't read that. I skimmed it.、Uh, it could be interesting. You know, I, I'm just criticizing some some of it because he's celebrity, okay? Not, I mean, I'm you know, but he, I'm pretty sure he's you know, very smart and、uh, you know, he's not, he's good. So anyway, philosophy and Paul Graham, okay, that's another article. 
Philosophy. What's philosophy and program ham? Chilis creator Mark Tower on is philosophy useful? So so program ham one day he he is fond fond of writing essays. So one day he wrote an essay that says is philosophy useful? And in my opinion, that essay is idiotic. He basically he concludes philosophy is not useful. <laughs> He's a like uh, you don't know what he's talking about, so I disagree. And Mark Tarver also disagrees. Okay, so that's some um, anecdote, anec, uh, an an anecdote of the programmer's law. That is the proper way to put it of what I just talked about. A n e a a a n e c D O T. Did I spell it correctly? Anecdote. Yeah, that's right. An anecdote is a brief re revealing account of an individual person or an incident. Yeah. So I'm giving a anecdote of a of the hacker law regarding Paul Graham and his essays, hackers and painters and hackers and stuff. Okay, let's copy that, and that's. I think that's it for today. Uh, let's post uh, the articles here, so we need to post it. Oh, there's another problem, combinatorial problem. So let's do that. So that's we since we are talking about mathematics, let's do that. Okay, but before we do that, let me finish posting my uh, essays. Close that, close that puzzles. Okay, um, polyomino puzzles. You can go by. I'm gonna go by polyomino puzzles on Amazon. I'm gonna put put a link later. So and this puzzle is interesting, and you can find all of them on my Sagrate. Great math puzzles page, and you can buy this. And so Christmas is coming, so you guys, is, you know, it's time to buy gifts for your loved ones and your coworkers. <laughs> okay, and so I have a collection of great math books. And this puzzle, by the way, this puzzle is fascinating. This this puzzle is part of the logic puzzle. Okay, which is the same class as this one, but this one, this one. By the way, the name of this puzzle is called Fifteen Puzzle, uh, and uh, so th there's an entire category of this type of puzzles. Okay, but the Fifteen Puzzle is trivial. I mean, it's really easy. But this one is quite fascinating. Okay, so it's called Cross Cross Key. It goes by several names. Um, actually, if you go to Wikipedia, you can find huge amount of details and history of this puzzle. Have you guys played it? Let me ask you guys. Have you guys played the have you guys seen the cross key puzzle? In fact, there are JavaScript versions, I'm pretty sure. You know, because back in 1990s, I go to the library, I read all kind of books, all these books that that is a, you know, there are books that that, you know, this is before the internet era, so there's no internet net. So what do you want to do? What do you do if you want to know all the puzzles in history? You go to the library. There are books about like all the puzzles in history. You know, like or or focus on in one country or things like that. So I read, uh, you know, I borrowed quite a few of those books and uh, uh, looked up, looked up their names and stuff. So you have puzzles and you have games. For example, you for example, you guys must have heard of Chinese checkers. This thing, Chinese checkers. You can go there buy. Okay, let me just paste the link here. Okay, am am I still on? So, so how long have I been talking? So oh my god, one hour and forty minutes. Fourteen minutes. Shit, time to stop. Okay, I think that's it then. Okay, so let me copy that. 
let me copy what I've talked about. So any anything else? So copy that and copy Pascal's theorem. Okay, actually we already did. And uh, Stack Overflow. Okay, Stack Overflow is a good place to look at what mathematicians are talking about. You go there, you know, you look at you look at some of them, then you get idea what what the math real mathematicians, professional mathematicians, they are talking about. Then you go back to your programmer's uh, fascination about category theory. You can see it's crap. Okay, you programmers, because you are in this well, you are in this well. You don't you don't know what is actually the real math. Yeah, but you think you think oh, category theory is the foundation of math. It's gonna solve all things. Oh, because isomorphism. Oh, because this is crap. Okay. Okay, and this website I showed. Okay, so uh, internet, you know, online encyclopedia of online sequences. That's great. Okay, that's it for today. And uh, Magpie says, "So, do you ever talk with people on Discord? I see a voice channel, but I don't reckon ever seeing anyone on there." No, we've been there a few times. Uh, just on the, you know, you like you can start one. Like you, if you just if you feel like chatting, you go to the voice channel. And you say, "Hey, I'm gonna be in voice channel. Who wants to talk about, you know, something, whatever, you know." Uh, so right now, for example, I'm in voice channel. Um, let me actually close down that. So there are some people I've I've talked to Emily. I've talked to Hello Beautiful People. In fact, Hello Beautiful People here. He did start you know, uh, quite a few times. He started a conversation. Like someone has to start it because if you don't, everyone is like, "Oh." You know they are not going to begin a voice because for a lot of programmers you feel uh, nervous about going on voice things like that. So someone has to say you know like hello beautiful people did a few times. You know you 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 say hey I'm gonna be a voice channel and it's chat or something or some topic or something. So so I talked to quite a few people there. You guys okay? Hello beautiful people and Emily and Alan and uh, Reaper. And uh, and this morning I talked to uh, this guy DX Elf. He's from uh, what? Well, he's from Scandinavia. Okay, uh, which is amazing, Scandinavia. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, bye. Oh yeah. So then, actually, let me see a few more comments. So Bar says every every form of knowledge roots in philosophy. Mm, you could say that if culture is based on philosophy, then Japanese philosophy, philosoph then Japanese philosophy must be much superior to Western philosophy. So why do you prefer idiotic Western philosophy over Japanese? That's um, I. You know, uh, culture is not wholly based on philosophy. Well, yeah, you can you could say it's based on philosophy. It's not. But philosophy does not make up the entire culture. In other words, culture is is not um, how how do, how they say the, the the constitute. You know, the culture is 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 not just philosophy. Okay, it's kind of some. It's a major part of it is is philosophy. Then you say, okay, so then Japanese uh, philosophy must be much superior to Western. No, not really. Uh, in my opinion, they are kind of different ways to lo look at things. For example, you look at things, Western philosophy, let me give you a summary, okay? Western philosophy tends to be logical, precise, you know, everything must be logic. Like, for example, you know, we when we argue, okay, what's your reason? You know, logic. Oh, you you have this uh, falsity because you, um, you know, young people, they just studied logic. They have, you know, uh, they have a bunch of jargons. That's, that means, um, that leads to, um, for example, one of those jar jargons is strawman. Strawman is one of the fallacy, okay, fallacy. All these are Western tradition. When you argue, you tend to very go by precision, by logic. For example, Jordan Peterson, 
the great intellectual of our time, Jordan Peterson today. He is, you know, one of his 12 rules for, uh, for, for, for a good life or something. It's like, you must learn to articulate well <laughs> and be, be precise like him. You know, articulate well like him, like, like the way he does, because he happens to be the one biggest great guy in articulation and precision of words. Jordan Peterson, guys. So he's a great intellectual of our time, but he's a white guy, white guy, Western philosophy. He's missing the Eastern part of it. Okay. So anyway, Western philosophy, you, logic and precision is, is a great part of it. And then you also have justice, justice, freedom of speech or individual, the concept of freedom in general, justice, freedom, and rape. Okay. Uh, it, that is, in fact, uh, f <laughs> one of the core of uh, Western philosophy. For example, the seduction of Europa. That is, that is how Europe is named. You know, we I did a video on that for one hour, a few months ago. You know, Europa. How is Europe named? Because the Greek mythology, the seduction of Europe, Europa. Europe, Europa is a beautiful girl, and one day the god. Zeus, the all omnipotent Zeus, just grabbed her by becoming a white bull, a white beautiful bull, and <laughs> get uh, Europa on his back and just ride off. Uh, so I talked about that a few months ago. So, so that's Western philosophy, okay? Greek mythology, justice, the concept of just justice, freedom, and and democracy, part of it, okay? Uh, and you know, and precision and all that. Now, when it comes to Eastern philosophy, you don't have that, okay? None, none of that, none of that shit. <laughs> you have Taoism, you have Yin Yang, you have Yin Yang, you have Taoism, you have everything is wishy washy, you, everything is a first, okay? It's a first, it's not logic, okay? It's, it is not logical, it's not, it's not the Western logical, it's not precision, no precision. In fact, everything is a fussy wussy thing. That is, that is the art of, that is the, kind of the that 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 is the nature of uh, Eastern philosophy when we talk about Eastern mostly I'm talking about Chinese philosophy because Chinese basically well I'm Chinese and chi China bas basically China spread that influenced Japan Korea and and South Asia so Eastern philosophy okay Taoism Taoism and Buddhism and uh, Confucianism okay so you it's kind of fuzzy. You go look up, you can study. So it's it's kind of so that is why you have like Taoism, Tao Te Ching, and I Ching. You know, Book of Change, and uh, basically you don't encounter logic or logical arguments. You know, things like that. But however, um, I know because uh, the logic kind of style or the the philosophy of logic they did exist in China around uh, year uh, 300 or something uh, during the warring era there's an era called warring era okay you look up wikipedia chinese hi history warring era so at that time during that time there is actually one branch one philosophy okay in, in china that is that is basically just like the western philosophy they focused on logic and linguistics they analyze the meaning, okay, just just like the you know Western philosophy, but that school never that school disappeared, kind of disappeared. That school is called Mo Mo Jia. Okay, actually that's interesting. Let me write it out. Uh, so today's topic, and we don't have time to talk about class stuff like keys. So remove that. So I'm talking about a summary of Eastern, of Western philosophy and Eastern philosophy, okay? And, uh, and I'm going, and then I'm talking about the origin, okay, the, the history of logic or logicism in China. That is called Mo Jia, okay? So that, that the, uh, in Chinese, it's, let me write it in English f first, okay? So it's called Mopism. 
M O P P I S M. Okay, I I think I spelled it correctly. I hope no, it's not right. I have to type in Chinese. Okay, so let me type in Chinese. So let's switch. Uh, because once I I find the Chinese, I can type the I can find the English. Okay, wait. There it is. Okay, let me copy that so you guys actually can look up. So we have that word here. So now we look up the web. There it is. Mo this is Mopism. This school, this school of thought is called Mopism. And let me show you the English version. Uh, Okay, there I'm missing a edge. Mohism, Mohism, that is a word. Okay, let me paste it here. Um, so that's today's topic we talked about. Um, so what am I saying? I'm saying, I'm saying that the mo Mohism is the origin of the logic and precision school of thought just like western philosophy in china and that happened around 470 bc so this is this is 200 2500 years ago in china mohism okay you can read wikipedia in detail and this school of thought yeah they focus on logic pretty much like western philosophy but but this school did not dominate uh, after the Roaring uh, period. After you know, one hundred years or two, this school kind of died out. So the 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 Confucianism and legalism and uh, kind of took over. So they so in general Chinese in China they don't anyway. That that's a bit history of that. Mo Yes. Okay, that's it. So, so I do not think Eastern philosophy is better than Western. They are just like different philosophy. You know how you regard the universe, how you regard the question, the ultimate question of what we are. Why are we here? Uh, you know, if you go by Western philosophy you don't have answers because you could go to quantum mechanics and you still don't have answers you know you don't know you can in fact you cannot you to this day you don't know whether god exists you have arguments you have great varieties of arguments but nobody can say a thing for sure that's western philosophy now eastern philosophy regarding the ultimate questions like where are we here you know well they they don't have precise answers. They don't seek precise answers neither. Okay, they, <laughs> they, you have yin and yang. You have kind of illogical, fuzziness philosophy. Okay, you, you know different approaches. Uh, and today I do not, you know, I I kind of like the Western way because when I was young, I always dislike, I always hated the Eastern philosophy, precisely because they are fuzzy. I don't like, you know, like you don't know what you're talking about exactly. It's open to interpretations. I like, I instead, I like, I'm in love with the Greek mythology and the Western philosophy, okay? Precision and all that logic. But now I'm old and, you know, since 10 years ago, I, I don't see it that way anymore. So it's just different philosophies. And in fact, Western philosophies, we got today's problems. You got lots of problems today. Like the, you know, let's not get into, like today's problems. Um, okay, that's it. That's it for real. Bye, guys. Have a good day. Uh, and I probably missed uh, questions, but... 
but that that'll be it.